Hello! Today we're going to be talking about doing a reservation system in SharePoint. This is something that applies to everybody's life. We all have to make reservations for all kinds of things. Vehicles, hotels, uh, res restaurants, all kinds of things like that. And it definitely applies in the workplace as well. And it really has to do with shared resources. We need to track shared resources. So common examples of that would be uh, making reservations for equipment uh, that's shared, um, meeting rooms, uh, definitely think about reserving conference rooms. Um, but now, especially with the mobile workforce, that type of thing, we do things like reserve desks or office space as well. Um, and, um, you know, all, all kinds of different things. There's a lot of possibilities. So it's important that we have some kind of easy automated system to handle that and that's what we're going to look at today so you can build a system like i'm going to demonstrate yourself according to your uh, requirements in your own organization and we'll just look at an easy to understand approach so you can tackle this challenge as well so now let's get sharepoint smart Okay, so I'm in SharePoint Online, and I've made a site just from a uh, blank team site in SharePoint called Reservations, and I've already set up the system. So we're going to kind of look through some of what I've set up and just cover some basic functionality and things like that. So I'm going to kind of go through the steps I use to construct the system and talk about um, steps that you can do as well. So the first thing, of course, you're going to have different categories of resources. I want to use that general term resources because we want this reservation system to work for all kinds of different things. So I've decided that I have four categories. We've got equipment and then uh, rooms such as conference rooms, offices, that type of thing. Um, then individual desks like cubicles. Uh, we're thinking about a workspace where um, you know, you're going to sign up to sit in a particular area uh, for the day. And then we have another category for vehicle. So um, we want to make sure we categorize this. You'll see in the interface why that's important as we get a little bit further along. Um, and then we're going to have two other lists. Um, the next list we'll look at is resources. And then we'll finally get to the reservations. So resources is just a simple concept. It is a shared resource. It is something, could be anything, that's shared and uh, we need to have the ability to reserve that uh, for a certain time frame. Um, so I've put in <clears throat> some different examples in here and we've got some uh, different desks and if I click on this um, you'll see um, how I did this. So you could make a diagram of your office space or something like that but you can see I just used the same picture and um, you know put a number over that. So you can see that'd be a pretty easy to understand concept as an employee. And then we've got equipment down here. You can see the thumbnails. We've got pictures of different types of equipment. Um, I've got some different um, rooms that you might reserve. You know, here's the main conference room. I've got a floor plan in the office. You could even sketch that out if you wanted to. Um, and, um, you know, different things like that. And I've got some cars and things like that. So first of all, real quick, just to demonstrate um, something that's really important, we want to make sure it's extremely simple to add these. You know, people aren't going to really like this system too much unless it's really easy to add resources and add reservations, that type of thing. So um, I'm going to add a resource real quick just to prove that out. So I've got a piece of uh, equipment that I want to add and um, this is going to be a scanner. This is just a SharePoint picture field. And um, I'll just go to my desktop. I already had some stuff mapped out there. There's the scanner. It shows a little thumbnail in the UI. And um, save that. And you'll just see it just shows up under the equipment. Um, incredibly simple. It's alphabetical. Um, and that's the way we like it. We want it just a very simple to understand. We use the group by 
SharePoint view to keep them in categories. So you can imagine as this list grows and things like that, probably going to do some filter views and things like that as we start to get into dozens or even hundreds of items. Um, but we like it real simple like that. Now you probably might want to add some more metadata, um, like some, you might want a serial number in there, model number, uh, description, um, and obviously it'd be real simple um, to add those things in there as well. Um, let's add one more. Let's see, we did a scanner. Let's do, um, what was the other one? I had another picture there. Oh yeah, label maker. Okay, so you can see it's a simple label maker is not a desk. <laughs> it's a piece of equipment. Um, but I just want to prove out that this is quite easy for us to just keep adding equipment. So these are different things that people can reserve. So you can see that this part of it is incredibly simple and that's how we want it to be. Okay, so now let's get to the meat of it. Let's get to the reservations. All right, so this is really the heart of it. How are we gonna facilitate um, employees to be able to reserve the conference room or um, reserve that piece of equipment or things like that? And um, you know, this is the interesting part of that. So you can see I already have a schedule of reservations and of course you get a start and end time and a status. And you can see the ones highlighted in green, they're confirmed. Um, we've got one that was conflict here. You're gonna see how that works. So let's go ahead and make a reservation. Let's, in fact, let's reserve that new resource we add, that new piece of equipment. Now I've got a custom form here and this is not out of the box SharePoint functionality. This is using a third party software called Ultimate Forms. Um, I use this software all the time. It's a really easy form building interface, gives you all kinds of other tools. So in terms of doing custom form setup, of course you have different options, but this is a really good easy option. And in fact, I'm going to be doing a live webinar um, on the same solution for InfoWives, which is the um, business that has that software. Later this month, you can go to the InfoWives website. I'll put a link below the video um, and you can either sign up to attend live or if you're watching this video later, you can watch the recording. So I'll link that for you. Notice I've got a form with some customization. It is defaulting to my name. So remember, the name of the game here is simple and easy, okay? So this is, the, this is a really cool part of it. Remember had those categories? So we're making it really easy to make a reservation. So if somebody comes and they wanna make a reservation, they say, yeah, I need to reserve a piece of equipment. And we have what's called a cascading dropdown. So you have category and resource. And that resource dropdown changes depending on the category. Okay, if I'm reserving a desk, I just see the desk options. If I'm reserving a piece of equipment, I just see the equipment options. And you can see it already loaded in those things that I had. Remember, I had the scanner and the label maker. And what's cool is if I didn't have this picture, that'd probably be confusing. I'd probably reserve the wrong thing or I could get confused really easily. Maybe there's a lot of scanners or printers, the label makers. But by having this, I see, you know, what you see is what you get. I can see exactly what it is that I'm reserving. Okay, so I can see what I'm doing and then it's just super simple. When do you need it for? Okay, I'm gonna reserve it for uh, next month and we'll say it's gonna be on the 16th. Um, I just need it for that whole day. So I'll say uh, 8 p.m., 8 a.m. To, to 5 p.m., how about that? Okay, so August 16th, 5 p.m. and go like that. I can put in notes if I want to, I don't have to. Now the image that's coming over um, automatically, so this is kind of something we can ignore, that just auto fills. And they, even if I wanted to change it, I can't. So um, it just helps with some of the functionality here. You'll see that in a second. Okay, so basically I'm requesting the reservation. It says pending. So um, there is some workflow in the background that's gonna make a check. As you can imagine, as you have lots of use, you've got uh, multiple um, different people uh, trying to make reservations for different kinds of equipment, that type of thing. Okay, so it's making the check for the label maker and it just switched to confirm, so we're good to go there. And then 
what you see is a group I view, so this makes it really easy for me. Maybe I don't want to look at everything. I'm just interested in equipment, so I can kind of drill down to what I'm interested in in the label maker. Um, so it confirmed it. It basically did a check to make sure, and if it doesn't work, then uh, the workflow is going to say there's a conflict and you've got to try to do something different. Okay, so um, notice the thumbnail, so that just is part of the visual management. Um, helps our users to kind of more easily understand what's going on. And then once it's confirmed, um, I'll have the ability I can go into the uh, form and there's something new there. I've got a button that says update Outlook Calendar. And that's also a part of the ultimate form software. When I click that, it will actually add this reservation into my calendar. And it's doing that based on this reserved by name, which is me. And that's all there is to it. So we've made it just as simple and painless as possible for our users. At the same time, from a management standpoint, it's very easy to scroll through this list and see which rooms or equipment or whatever kind of resources are checked out to someone or going to be checked out at a future date, that type of thing. Um, and you can see here's an example of one where there was conflict. Okay, so somebody came in here and tried to make this um, to reserve it all the way till the end of September, and that didn't work. There were already confirmations before that. Now, how do you handle that? Email notifications are a part of that story. Um, so, just to demonstrate that a little bit, um, we'll uh, I'll go to an email real quick just so you have an idea of, of how we want that to work. Just one second. Okay, so. Here's my email. This is for the label maker. Good job, Will. Your reservation for the label maker is confirmed. You may have it for August 16th, 8 to 5. Okay, so that's the normal thing. And there's a little note that tells you, oh, open the reservation and click on update calendar. That'll take care of that functionality. And then um, let's look at the conflict side of things. If we had a conflict, what is it going to do? It sends an email, it tells you there was a conflict and you need to go back in. Well, we're not just going to leave them hanging high and dry. That's that's not very nice. It says, oh, you need to change that. You know, you messed up on the dates. It's overlapping. It says there's a conflict. Gave them a message, status conflict. So I have the ability in here, I can adjust that date. I can say, oh, geez, I screwed up. I'm so sorry. I actually I actually really just needed it for, you know, the 22nd through the 24th. Then you have some validation checks in here. We don't want them to do like some knuckleheaded thing like this where I put an end date that's before the start date. And if I do that, it's going to say, uh, you might want to check that. Uh, start must be before the end and must be after the start. Makes sense, right? So we do want to have those blocks so people don't do something foolish. Um, but um, here we go. I've got a valid information and it's going to recheck. Okay, so there's a conflict on the first attempt at the reservation and then it checks again and this will switch. So right now it's, it says conflict but um, it's going to recheck that information. It does take a little bit of time to go through its workflow. Boom! See that? Changed to a green color. We're in the good. We're going to get an email. It's going to confirm everything works the way that we want. Um, so this is just a cool uh, system to set this up. So um, really that's most of what I wanted to show you today. Um, this is facilitated, a lot of this functionality is through uh, Ultimate Forms. And if you want more information on that, just leave a comment on the video. And like I say, you can go to the InfoWise Ultimate Forms website if you just Google that. And you can sign up to attend a live webinar. You can ask questions live, we'll answer those for you. Um, and um, it's just really cool software. It lets you do this type of stuff really easily. And that lets you set up uh, the email notifications. Um, so I've got some email alert rules for this. And then, um, you know, we've got the workflow as well. So I have these different conditions in the background to check for conflicts, that type of thing. And set up the thumbnail, calendar events, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And of course, some of this workflow and these type of things you can do through Power Automate as well. So mostly today we just wanted to take a look at a concept for a reservation system that you could build in SharePoint. So there are different tools you can do to use that. This is an example of a really easy approach to get that done. Okay.
So I really appreciate you guys taking a look at that concept today. Really, I just wanted to show you something I was working on. Um, I really like the simple to use tool, simple to understand concept, and also the visual management, being able to do things with pictures and highlighting, um, stuff that just doesn't even need training to understand. And this is the concept, making reservations, that really applies um, you know, to all kinds of organizations. This is very extensible and that's a benefit to keeping it so simple initially is in, invariably your organization will come with more requirements. They may, for example, want an approval system, um, something like that. So um, lots of stuff you can do with it. So hope you found that interesting. Hope you maybe makes you think about doing something similar for your organization. So let me know. Uh, leave some comments. Um, let me know how you guys do reservations, what kind of things you want to incorporate, because there's lots of possibilities here. So hope you enjoyed and see you in the next video.